Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me today. So you can see today I'm going to be looking at some suggestions on how we can maximize engagement uh, in a synchronous live lesson. So if you're interested in this topic, then please keep on watching. Okay, so you can see that I'm going to be talking about perhaps a possible lesson structure that you could use if you are holding a live synchronous session with your students. And this could either be online or in person. And I'm just going to give you both options options and let me move myself out of the way here. So of course in the online environment connection and trying to promote that sense of belonging with our students is really important. So even though we may not always think about how important a greeting is, it's actually really important. And I've seen lots of wonderful YouTube videos of teachers standing outside their classroom and asking their students how they would like to be greeted with a high five or with a hug, with just a hello. And that is really important, I think, with connecting with your students at the beginning of any lesson. So if you're in the virtual world, then, you know, connect with, I think your students through an icebreaker perhaps. So ask your students to bring their favorite food or their favorite item and then have a few minutes where people share their um, favorite items. Maybe if you've got a big class, maybe five students could share every single time so that there's a rotation. Another idea to connect with your students is just to ask them, you know, what makes you happy? And they can just put that in the chat box if you're in a, a virtual online environment. And then the actual lesson, I think, should start with some kind of provocation or a prompt. So it's a carefully designed inquiry-based learning engagement that has lots of questions. And it could be either a picture, could be a video, it could be just lots of questions for students to discuss and explore. So that provocation at the beginning, I think is really important to pique students' interest and motivation. And then to give students that opportunity to collaborate. So creating that breakout room or putting your students in groups, they may have to be socially distanced if you're in the physical in-person environment, but allowing students to be able to collaborate so that we utilize that e-learning affordance of collaborative intelligence. And we try to promote and develop those collaboration skills that are really important uh, for this current day and age. And then after breakout rooms, of course, there's got to be some kind of sharing or some kind of feedback and to uh, ensure that all your group members in the breakout rooms have a specific role. So one role could be the scribe, one role could be the speaker to report back. Another person could be the timer because you want to give everybody one to two minutes to be able to speak in that breakout room so everyone has a voice. And when they're sharing and they're collaborating in the breakout room, a, a prompt such as see, think, wonder or some kind of conceptual questions will just help guide their thinking and their discussions. So it's really important that in those breakout rooms or any kind of collaborative work that the group roles are explicit and the instructions are explicit as well. Now, I know that you probably have a lot of wonderful suggestions as well of what we can include in a live synchronous lesson. So please feel free to put a comment in the section below and I hope to see you next time. Bye.